dare shoot him. My favorite part about hunting in Pennsylvania, and especially in central Pennsylvania, is just the variety of predators that you can call in. Any stand that I set up in Pennsylvania, I can call in a coyote, a bobcat, a red fox, a gray fox, or a raccoon. And we really do have a good population of each subspecies. Our coyote population today um, is, is to the point to where, number one, the fox population is starting to go down, the red fox in particular, and you're seeing more and more of the coyotes. So it's not like hunting out west. It is definitely getting to the point to where you are going to be more successful. You're gonna call more coyotes in Pennsylvania, uh, more so than you ever have. No wind tonight, so it should be good. We're in some red fox country, maybe a gray here and there. Mike's gonna run the rifle and take the boom stick, see what happens. Walking into this stand, we have eyes right away down in front of us, so we get set up and we're focused, obviously, where those eyes are. This fox really isn't coming in. We saw another set of eyes. It could be a house cat. And we played a couple distress sounds, some bird sounds. Then we started going into platinum gray fox. Anytime in this area, you know, you play that platinum gray fox, something's gonna happen. I shot him, I shot him. You want him, Andrew? He's down, he's down. And I take the shot and a follow-up shot and we had fur down. Got some silver fur. I love killing gray fox. That Eotech at night, I mean, how can, looking at a bead's kind of tough, but when you have that little red dot, it makes the world so much easier. <laughs> That red dot just shows up perfectly, especially for predators at night. Oh yeah, that's a good gray. It's probably an older fox. Nice mature fox though. Nice mature gray fox. This fur here is definitely worth skinning out. I got one in the basket. Getting set up on this next day and we get out of the truck and we hear coyotes right away. And they're relatively close. I think they're callable. What I've done is I have a, a cornfield in front of us and a soybean field to our right. There's a fence row about 60 yards in front of us and I put that call right in that fence row. Automatically we're thinking coyotes so we call to those coyotes right away. Let's start out with a howl. <laughs> I immediately turned on coyote pair and I put it, played that sound as loud as it could, kind of let him know that there's a, a group of coyotes over here and shut it down. They started howling and answering me back and then I started playing Lil's Cottontail. Gonna get a rabbit. Oh yeah, come in right here. and the coyotes that were off to the right didn't come in. No, we get eyes coming off to my left to where I'm set up on. We see this coyote just rolling in, coming in pretty hard right to the call. This had to have been one of those fringe coyotes that, that heard that prey distress sound and was coming in to try to take the free meal away from what was going on. and I pull that trigger, and we've got a coyote down here in PA. Good, Good call, nice shot. Abner said he's got this new sequence that calls in everything, calls in every coyote around, and <laughs> you know how you say something like that, you're like, yeah, right, well, he was right, he just called them coyotes in. Good call. No call, nice shot. Did you hear the meat you put on that side? <laughs> He was, whenever I saw the eyes, they were still low to the ground. That's because he was down like this. <laughs> get a piece of, piece of metal, man. He was hungry. 
Very nice, man. Big coyote, dude. Oh, big, big dog. Coyote. Holy cow. Big, oh big, big God, coyote. Dude. Yeah, it's a big coyote. Yeah, it's a big coyote. Holy <laughs> cow, look at that sucker. <laughs> yeah, man. This guy, you guys down in Texas now, you see this thing, you're gonna be like, that's a wolf. <laughs> I seriously think I might have uh, carried a deer like this before that weighed about the same. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Gray Fox has got, got some company now. You know, weather has been crazy here in PA. It, it's, uh, you know, unseasonably warm temperatures leading up to the PA season opener. You got a bright moon. We have uh, a cold front moving in with a lot of wind. They're calling for wind for the next two days, so it's going to be tough. You know, in years past, we've always tried to separate crews and have two different people out there filming, but this year we decided to simplify things. We're just gonna focus on just really sticking together and we're gonna cherry pick our best stands and see what happens. Tonight, we got Zach with us. You know, you guys know before that Zach has been kind of there is uh, just a protege, just kind of learning. Last year he shot his first fox. Tonight he gets to come out all night, stay with us, and actually be one of the hunters. So. Having him along as one of the guys means a lot to me. And I'm telling you, he is eat up with this predator hunting. It's all he wants to do, it's all he looks forward to, and I know it means a lot to Zach. Let's get out of here and kill something. This first stand is, is one of the Amish stands that I have, and it, it's been very successful for us in the past. I have a field here to the right, and then to the left it's open too. They can come from both directions, so I figure if we get right up in front of this corn, we still get this field to the right. And anything coming from the left will yeah. see too. So go right up here in front of this corn and get set up. You know, I'm really excited this year to be able to finally shoot in Pennsylvania with the suppressor. You know, the suppressors are a huge advantage for night hunters. I have longed for the day where I could sit on a predator stand in Pennsylvania with a suppressor on the end of my gun to have quicker follow-up shots, better follow-up shots, and even calling in multiple predators. You know, we've expanded our sound library of sounds, as we always have. So, you know, probably going to start off with the prey distress sounds. You know, that, that to me is casting the widest net because we're out hunting fox and coyotes, not coyote specific. So you still want to hit those prey distress sounds first before you go off into some of the other sounds, such as the coyote pup distress sounds. Here, be looking over here. Shot over him. Over here, over here. Watch over here. Zach, we're going to keep calling. I'm going to switch over to the gray fox. Mike continued calling, and I had another fox roll in from my right in this hay field. There's another one on top of the hill. Coming in on top of the hill, right to blow, right to blow. Another fox comes in, and Zach gets his second opportunity to shoot a fox. Shot. 
shot, right. Brad. Nice shot. Good job, buddy. I'm just saying shotgun, shotgun, I'm getting mine ready. And I hear Zach say, Dad, Dad, I got it, I got it. He scooted up and he made a great shot. Good job, bud. Double. Awesome. Way to go. Good shot, Abner. Nice job, guy. Had a Baby Zach, good job, man. Good shot. Thanks. That dude was coming down off the hill and I was like, he gonna come in here and fix him to lick our toes. <laughs> That's an older fuck. A good shot, good job, bud. That big old red fox right there, isn't it? Male? Yeah, that's a good one. Mine ain't even half the size of yours. It had Abner got this year's pup, and you got the adult. Those red fox came into a platinum gray fox sound. You know, so don't be fooled by thinking that by using a gray fox sound, you're only gonna call in gray fox. Because again, it's one of those sounds that you're gonna call in multiple predators. Good now it's your dad's Mike. turn. Good job, Mike. Nice call, bro. Good job, guys. We had three shot opportunities on this stand, which I think is uh, a lot of it's contributed to that suppressor and that really takes the boom factor out of that gun. And whenever you have that, you're not echoing that throughout the valley and you know, Fox don't notice that as much. Good job, man. Since we're already filming a show right here in Central PA, home of Fox Pro, we've decided we show you firsthand just why we're so proud of the Fox Pro name and the products we produce. Welcome to Fox Pro. You know, a lot has changed here since dad built his first call in our garage over 22 years ago. One of the things that you'll notice when you first visit Fox Pro is the pride that we take in what we do. You know, our customers have a certain expectation when they purchase a Fox Pro product so building products with the highest quality is our top priority. So you get to see firsthand just how a product design begins. We're actually working on a new product now. It's kind of going to be a surprise. I'm not going to let you know what it is, uh, but Chad is actually working um, on a clay model structure of one of our new products that we're going to be working on so that we can get an actual physical size of what this thing is going to look, going to look like. Then he takes this and he works hand in hand with Dave Landis, the mechanical engineer who can actually take those ideas that we have on paper and actually turn them into um, a, a product. And you can see them they're actually working here on our new gun mounted light you know there's a lot of intricate details that you guys don't get to see in the uh, development of a new product so this is where the manufacturing process really begins we get the raw PC boards in for every single unit transmitter that we make and then once you have those boards you have to actually put a solder paste on them to allow the components to adhere to the board and that's what this machine here is doing. Once the solder paste is applied to the boards, they come over here to the pick and place machine with hydro heads that'll actually go and pick up each individual component for that particular unit and place it on the board. And you can see we're able to do multiple boards at one time. This machine is running nonstop to keep up with our production needs that we have for every specific unit. Once it comes off of the pick and place machine, it then has to go through the oven it heats up that solder paste and allows it to flow and places those parts on that board even better. Once it comes off, each individual PC board is then scoped and inspected for any possible uh, solder shorts or misalignment of parts or anything. After they come from the surface mount machine, the boards come into this room here where they're putting some of the hole through parts on. The pieces that the surface mount machine can't put on. This brass plate right here is one that's shielding uh, the microprocessor so that uh, we're able to optimize our remote control range by, by limiting the amount of noise that comes from some of these pieces. So once the board's getting done in the PTH room, they come into here for final assembly, and she's actually assembling the speakers and the additional wires that get put on, and now this is a dead bone that is ready for final assembly. Comes over here, and here we have a dead bone being assembled. So there you have it, a high quality Fox Pro product, proudly made here in the USA for under $100. One of the passions that I have in what I do is, is being able to come up with new and innovative features to offer to our consumers. When I'm on a stand, you know, out there hunting these predators, I'm constantly thinking of ways that a Fox Pro product can make you a more successful predator hunter. 
we're trying to do as much as we can to get your eyes away from that Fox Pro transmitter. So if you can get your eyes focused out there in the field more, you're gonna be a more successful predator hunter because you're gonna pick up on those predators a lot quicker. You know, but it's not just taking your eyes away from the transmitter, it's what can we do on these stands to make me more successful? What are the barometric pressures that I'm most successful at? What are my most successful sounds? What's the most successful uh, moon phase that I have? You know, or the temperature, the temperature trends. You know, and that is the beauty of Fox data. It takes your complete stand records that for you so you can digest that information later and learn from it and become a better predator hunter. So, you know, for us, um, we're constantly trying to one-up ourselves and I'm proud to be able to do that while I'm sharing the same passion as you and that's out there predator hunting. It's late October. It's the opening weekend of fox season in Pennsylvania. We have a bright moon and a cold front moving in. Changing it up a little bit. We're hunting some big wide open fields over the mountain. Got some fox in the field, but they just weren't responding to the call at all. It was pretty windy. But a lot of times you change locations. If you're not having luck in one area, you've got high wind. Just move locations, get in some different areas. These fields aren't nearly as wide open as they were, so hopefully this will change our luck. Let's go kill some fucks. Like our other stands, we're picking the stands that have produced well for us. This is just another one of those. It's real close to my home. It's less than two minutes away from where I live. You know, typically in this stand, they've come from either the right or the left. This is another one of those stands and you don't know exactly which direction they come from. I'm sitting on point with the rifle and Mike's shining the light, running the call and he has a boomstick on his shoulder. He's gonna walk up and touch it. At least the cats like the call. We're getting late in the stand. Mike turns on platinum gray fox. He uses fox fusion to mix two gray fox distress sounds together, sound like a fight. And once you know it, off to the left, here comes a gray. Shotgun. We made that switch. We came to a new area. We called a fox in right away. So. Nice gray fox. Mm, male. I mean, he's not as good as he will be in February, but I mean, for end of October, he's furred up pretty good. Mike and I went to another area that I really like to target for gray fox, and it seems to always produce year after year. So we sit down and we start playing baby cottontail and I'm going through a, a list of sounds that I like to play, some bird distress sounds, tip mouse tantrum, nutty nut hatch, eastern cottontail, lil's cottontail, and I get to about 11 minutes and nothing's responded at all. And I, I know the wind's good, we've got a right to left wind, they always come down in front of me, and uh, I just start playing platinum gray fox and I'm just gonna let that sucker eat because these grays can come from a long ways and it may take them some time. All you heard was psh, because of that suppressor. That 204, that suppressed arm, man, that thing was quiet. Dude, isn't it quiet? Oh, it's big geez. fields here, but it just sounded like a little pointy going off. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. The opening week of fox season here in Pennsylvania was a great success this year. We've got coyotes. We've got Zach shooting his first red fox. Sure. We've got gray fox down. We had great action despite the challenge with the moon. It's going to be a good show. Good job, man. Nice job, man. Pennsylvania, fur takers. Right here on the outdoor channel.